Hello, this is Marisa Herrera. It's a beautiful autumn day. I'm here in Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. And I want to talk today about preparing your garden for winter. I'm here with uh, Christina Nikolic. She's a certified organic landscape designer and gardener and environmental educator. Hi, Christina. Thank Hi, you Marisa. for joining us. My pleasure. All right, so I want to know how you prepare your garden for winter. Mm -hmm and uh, doing the organic approach, mm -hmm. how would you do that? The organic approach is first of all a change in your mind, I found. I was brought up a conventional gardener and I used to clean up my garden and clean up my clients' gardens. And then over time I learned that this way I work against natural processes. And I've since started to appreciate that a healthy degree of messiness is actually a very good thing in organic garden. Organic gardening means that you work with nature, you pay attention to natural processes and you don't interfere or interfere as little as possible and work with what's there. To me, it represents basically connecting with nature, which is one of the things we want to do when we are living green or approaching that first green step, the appreciation of nature. Mm -hmm. I see here in your garden, obviously a very natural looking garden. Mm. Can you tell me, do you need to fertilize your garden to prepare it for winter? Not in the tra tra traditional sense. I have stopped using synthetic fertilizers years, maybe decades ago. I rely on nature's organic matter to come down from the trees and provide the nutrients that the plant has taken out before. Also synthetic fertilizers are very damaging to the soil ecosystem and then in turn to the plants, so there's a good reason not to use them, save the money, save the pollution, work with compost and organic matter. That's why I see all the leaves on your beds. That's right, yeah. yeah so it's a natural uh, uh, nutrition. It is, exactly. The, the plants have taken the nutrients out of the soil before. We we leave them, we, we let the leaves, we allow the leaves to fall. That's why it's good to have a bed around your tree and not the tree in the, in the turf. Uh, so we allow the leaves to fall right where they should land and replenish the natural fertility of the soil. So basically it's leaving the leaves where they fall, right? That's right, that's why they call, they call them leaves. I see also more than leaves, you know, like twigs and other, I would call it organic matter. Right. All of it is plant food eventually. It goes down, it, it's broken down by microbes and the microbes then make plant nutrients available. So I haven't really removed anything much out of this garden over the last three years except for some noxious weeds. But most everything else, including pruned branches and stuff, I chop up into small pieces and I let them drop. That's my mantra, it's chop and drop. Even if I pull weeds, I just pull them up and if they haven't gone to seed yet, if they're not bad guys, I just leave them on the ground, they form the natural mulch and they break down. Well, it makes sense, right? Leaving things where they are. Because mm -hmm. aren't you trying to emulate nature as much as possible? That's right, but the same principles apply. In the forest, nature recycles all the forest products, it recycles whole trees, and we try to do the same on a smaller scale in the garden. What if someone has an abundance of leaves? What would you do with that? Well, if I have an extra pile of leaves, my first instinct is to put them right on the bed as a mulch. They will all be gone, just disappeared, broken down, turned into plant food by next summer. So this looks, that's what it looks like first as, as you apply them and then they will break down over time. If you have a whole ton of them and it's like oak leaves or something that doesn't break down so easy, then put them in a garbage can and stick the weed whipper in them and shred them to smaller pieces. Or you could also put them in the compost and make leaf mold for, for, this, for use in next spring. And by far the easiest and least um, time consuming is to use them directly freshly on the beds. Most people only mulch for one reason is that they would like to suppress weeds, which is great and mulch does that. But it has so many fringe benefits, so many side benefits in that we protect the soil from the elements of very cold or very hot or uh, water hitting it and compacting it and erosion in subsequent yeah. And we also um, insulate it from insulated roots from very cold or very hot. Plant roots like it moderately cool and moist at all times. Um, we do we improve uh, the soil's ability to hold water and air and nutrients. And first of all, and most importantly probably, is that we provide food for the microbes. Soil is full of bugs, and they're all most of them are really good guys. They are the ones that break down our leaves and make them into plant food and humus. So mulching, most of all, should be done with um, an eye on feeding the microbes who in turn feed our plants. There's an ecosystem, there's an underground internet connection in the soil, there's all those fungi and bacteria working for us and we should, we, we would be well advised to support them in their work because they're our maintenance crew and so if we keep them fed and watered and happy they will do the most of the work for us in terms of fertility, healthy plants, 
and no need for fertilizers or pesticides. How about moisture? We on the west coast, we're pretty blessed in that we get fall rains and our gardens are not too dry as they enter the winter. But if you live in a cold climate where the summers are dry and the, you know, most of the water that falls down falls as snow, you might want to give your garden a really good soak before it freezes up because it provides the roots with that extra amount of moisture to harden up the plants and uh, get them some last nutrients and keep the soil life going as well. You have here a handful of soil. Yeah, that's my soil. I'm so yeah, proud of my soil. Yeah, that's amazing. It holds, all this humus content in here works like a sponge and it holds the moisture in the ground. So, and that also is what makes it so crumbly. It's the microbes action that make it crumbly and when it's crumbly and loose, it has, it, you know, it stores air and moisture a lot much better. Exactly. It, it looks healthy, vibrant, yeah, alive. Yeah, yeah and right? it smells good too. Exactly. Are we to do anything with uh, transplanting and planting at this time of the year? Yeah, the fall is actually a very good time to lift perennials, to divide them, transplant to new places, to plant all sorts of plants, containerized, um, to set your bulbs in for next spring. Fall is a good time because you can do it before the freeze up. The soil is still moderately warm, the roots right. will develop and then they're better equipped to sust like sustain themselves over the next season than if you do it in the spring and they have a dry summer coming. You are in the process of transplanting. Is there something that we need to do in particular? Oh yeah, my pet peeve, don't plant too deeply. Okay. A lot of people mean really well, they tuck the plants in nicely and pile the soil against the trunk, that's not a good idea. You want to plant exactly at the level that the plant used to be, either in the container or in the ground previously. And with young trees, you want to see where the tree becomes a root player. That should be at the surface. Do plants need some kind of protection or shelter? If you're on the prairies and you want to have cedars, you need to wrap them up. Out here, the cedars are almost like a weed. We don't need to do anything about them. But as you mentioned shelter, it comes back down to the mulch. We want to shelter the roots by way of an insulating mulch. For even on the west coast, we get snow and frost. So um, protect the root system, which is less hardy than above ground parts and shelter for the microbes and the soil organisms because their habitat is in the mulch, in the litter layer that could be coarse on top and gets finer as you go down. All that is alive with critters that are doing vital services for us. But they need our shelter. They need the moisture, the shelter and the food. That's all we want to give them. And that makes our life rather easy. That's right. In, in that we just support, you know, put yourself in their shoes. Microbes are people too and they have needs. And so if you meet those needs of food, water and shelter, we're set, pretty much. We can like eliminate most of our garden problems at that stage. In essence, not to prepare our gardens for winter, mm -hmm. what are the main points? The main point is use the wonderful free gift of leaves. And leave the leaves where you can, except on your patios and decks and except on the lawn. Put all the leaves into your beds as far as you possibly can for living mulch. And if you're running out of space, you can compost them, or put them in a leaf bin to make leaf mold, or just add them to your regular compost. But most of the time, even if you have a foot deep layer of leaves in your beds, they'll be just fine. They'll make wonderful plant food, micro food, they will insulate the soil, keep things temperate, not too cold, not too hot, keep moisture in, keep the weeds down, and in the spring you'll have wonderfully improved soil. Another thing I think it's obviously you want to provide the moisture right, yes. for the soil. If it's been a dry summer and if you're expecting the frost, then try to get a good soaking in the ground before the freeze up. We just had a, a day of rain in Victoria the last few days and it has been very dry before. I just looked, we had about two inches of rain infiltrating into the soil. The rest was still dry. So you might even now give it a good watering, especially for young transplants. Oh, sounds great. So this is amazing, you know, the wonders again of nature mm -hmm. and how by allowing nature to take its course, we can come one step closer into living green. Yeah. So thank you, Christina, now for sharing your knowledge and You're experience. Welcome. Yeah, till next time. Yes, until next time. This right. is Marisa Herrera, wishing healthy and green living for you and your pets.